The world may have stopped, but what never stops is wrestling pay-per-views. We had WrestleMania, then we had Money in the Bank, and now we have Double or Nothing from those little ragamuffins known as All Elite Wrestling. And it's a very intriguing card, mostly because we have that stadium stampede thing, which could be the most ridiculous thing we've seen in 2020. And that actually is massive, because think of all the nonsense we've seen already. Money in the Bank, for example. But my name is Simon Miller, you are watching What Culture Wrestling. You hate me because I'm wearing a vest, but look, it's 700 degrees out there and I'm going to sweat throughout this video anyway, so I may as well do what I can. But before we get to the weekend, we've got to take our brains, remove them from our head, shake them around, put them back in and try and predict what is going to happen at Double or Nothing. I actually think it's quite hard, but let's do it. We will start with the kickoff show, or whatever the hell AEW are calling it. They've got a special name, but it escapes me right now because I'm a bald asshole. And it is indeed going to be Private Party. Haven't seen them in a while. Nice to have you back. Taking on the best friends, and the winner becomes the number one contender. And I'm going to keep this nice and simple. If the best friends don't win, what on earth are we doing? I don't mean that as a knock to Private Party. I think they're great. Their match they had with the Young Bucks in the Tag Team Tournament ages ago was one of my favourites so far on AEW. But the best friends have like been brilliant throughout this whole pandemic nonsense. Surely they need to have some dangling carrot they can now grab hold of. This has got to be it. And also if they don't win, how the hell are you going to build them back up? And also I just prefer that match. I mean right now it is Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. And while I would like to see them take on Private Party at one point, I would rather Private Party, you know, got some momentum first and got into some stories, much like the best friends have been doing. And then you can transition across to that. Because if you go the other way, like I say, you just negate everything that Chucky TT and Trent have done. I don't think we want to do that. So I think it'll be an amazing match. I think it will start the pay-per-view wonderfully. But these two win probably after an awful waffle. We're also getting the casino ladder match for a future opportunity at the AEW world title. I think I'll just read you the rules because they are a bit crazy, but personally, I think they're pretty badass. So I'm getting this off the internet, so it could be wrong, but I'm 99% sure it's correct because the rules are two wrestlers begin the match and every 90 seconds, another participant enters. The winner is the one who retrieves the casino chip, which is suspended upon the ring, who knows the gambling theme here, and the match can be won before all the participants have entered. And that, of course, is Darby Allen, Colt Cabana, Orange Cassidy, Ray Phoenix, Scorpio Sky, Kip Sabian, Frankie Kazarian, and my man, Luchasaurus. Rawr. And I love that twist. It's like the anti rule. Raw Rumble. You know, if you want to win the Raw Rumble, you have to wait until all 30 participants are in there. But in this ladder match, let's say Darby Allen is number one, and I don't know, Kazarian is number two. One of them could just climb up the ladder, grab the chip, and then Luchasaurus could come out and be like, man, I am one sad dinosaur, and he would be 100% correct. Now, I don't know if you do want to do that. Maybe you want to set a president, but I wouldn't mind. That's the big criticism I keep seeing. Well, that's stupid. Somebody may not even make it into the match. Great, you could tie that into their character and they could moan about that for days. Like Kip Sabian. Kip Sabian could build an entire angle off the fact he got royally screwed over and then maybe he tries and wins the chip back. But the chip is in Darby Allen's pocket. I have no idea. Point is, I think Darby Allen's gonna win it. I mentioned his name now about 72 times. I think given everything that he has done up with Cody Rhodes at this point, and he's always come so close to certain things, and then it got taken away. Plus the fans love him. This is the time. There's no point to hold off the trigger anymore. Give him a shot, see what he does. I will say that Orange Cassidy may be an outsider shot because he's very good for ratings and he sells merchandise and that is called being over and being a star. But this is also true for Darby. I just think you can do more with it. I think you're going to continue to build him. So I'll go with this. And I'll make the bold prediction that, yes, two people won't make it into the match. Of course, there's also a TBD. I forgot about that. There's a mystery man. This is difficult because a little part of me thinks it could be Zack Ryder, right? I really, really do think this. But then do you want to really not get that kind of reaction from the crowd? But there's no fans, but we may not have fans until like 3476. We can't wait for that year. And if he does do it, he probably needs to win. But do you want him to go straight into a world championship match? I'm sticking with Darby Allen, and I have absolutely no idea who that mystery person is going to be. I'll say Zack Ryder, maybe even Rusev. We are also going to get a singles match between MJF and Jungle Boy. And this one is also very intriguing because I don't think MGF has actually lost in AEW yet. He was involved in some kind of four-way or tag team match and he wasn't on the victorious team, but that doesn't count. And while Jungle Boy does lose all the time, 
do you really want to have him pinned to the mat again? And everything I've heard about this as well is that anyone that saw these two wrestle on the indie scene, well, they absolutely tore it up. So I'm very excited about this. And look, there is a way easy way to get out of this. We kind of hinted at it on this week's Dynamite. It's going to involve the Diamond Ring. It's going to involve Wardlow. You'll get really mad at Maxwell, but that's what you're meant to do. That's what his whole persona is. You just want to take your own fist and ram it into his face because he never shuts up. Obviously, in my opinion, Maxwell Jacob Friedman will get the win. However, there is the outside chance that making Marco Stunt is out there to try and get some sort of revenge against Wardlow, because that man hasn't been nice to him, and nor was he nice against Jungle Boy. And of course, it looks like he is about to engage in a feud with Luchasaurus, and he's involved with these two good guys too. I love it. Look at all the multiple avenues. But I don't think you want Jungle Boy to win. I think you want MGF to come out the other side, and maybe even start making his way towards the World Championship itself, because that is a match made right there. John Moxley, good guy, everyone loves, against MJF, bad guy. Again, everybody wants to take their foot and stick up his ass in a like aggressive way, not like in a weird way. Probably end with MJF just punching Jungle Boy right in the balls, but he's young. He can recover from his brood testicles. And look, in the future, Jungle Jack Perry, or whatever the hell Jim Ross calls him, he is going to be great too. But I think MGF is just a little bit in front of him, so we should continue down that path. We're also meant to get Dr. Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander, and I don't know 100% right now if we are getting that, because like a wrestling nerd, wrestling geek, I think that the injury on Dynamite may have been legit. I did a little looking on the internet, and no one seems to know, but let's say we are getting it, I will never bet against the dentist. And the reason for that is very similar to what we just talked about. Chris Statlander has only just come back, whereas during the pandemic, Britt Baker has been an absolute star and found her new character, who is great. Now, the interesting part of this is that her new character can actually lose. Because she's so obnoxious, that's just something that fans are going to want to see. But more importantly, it ties into what I have decided is going to happen when Nyla Rose takes on Sheeta for the AEW Women's Championship. Now, I may be going absolutely nuts here, but given that the last thing we saw on Dynamite between those two women was one, Nyla Rose getting a pinfall over Sheeta, and then Sheeta getting some kind of revenge by suplexing her through a table, I actually think AEW may be switching the title here and that way you have a face as the champion and what do you need when you have a face champion? You need a good heel. Who's a good heel? Britt Baker. What does that mean Britt Baker needs to do? It means he needs to beat Chris Statlander and there I have created a map of joy. Probably completely wrong, probably right off my noggin but I am bald so you know sometimes nuclear waves get in my head and they confuse me but I'm going with Sheena, I'm saying a title change and I'm putting it on Britt Baker, and that is our next feud. Unless, of course, Britt Baker's injured, then maybe it all changes. Dustin Rhodes versus Sean Spears, my future tag team partner, where hey, who is also going to happen on this one. And I think, again, this is nice and simple. After Sean Spears was a massive dick on Dynamite and did some fake news, kayfabe news, go and subscribe to it right now, Dustin Rhodes probably needs to come back. We haven't seen him, I don't think, since he got beaten up by Lance Archer, and he gets the win. Sean Spears, another guy he can lose. It doesn't really matter. He's kind of there just to transition into different storylines. That's that. I bet Dustin Rhodes also kicks him in the ghoulies like he does with a lot of people. Then we'll moan about there being no disqualification because the referee will probably just watch it and go, well, I don't care. I enjoy this kind of sexual stuff. You go get him, Dustin. Which brings us on to our three big matches, and I will start with the finals of the TNT Championship Tournament, which does see Cody Rhodes, along with Arn Anderson, taking on Lance Archer, along with Jake Roberts. And I just want to give an applause for All Elite Wrestling, because you could go in about 72 directions here, and I honestly can't guess. I'm going to try. And you also have this crazy outsider of Mike Tyson apparently having free reign. Is he going to get in the ring? Is he going to become the TNT champion? I have absolutely no clue. But you imagine someone's getting punched. So it all depends on what you want from the future. If you like this idea that Cody Rhodes keeps going for championships, but he can never make it, then yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. And it's a narrative you can keep going for months. Also, since Lance Archer did debut, he's been a behemoth, he's been a monster. It looks like he can't lose. I don't think you want to take that away from him so soon. I actually think that would be really dumb. And Cody's Cody. He's just got something about him now. I don't think he gets anything more by being the TNT champion. But I do believe that Lance does. So I'm going to go with that. But this Mike Tyson thing. Something is happening with Mike Tyson. You don't bring in the baddest man on the planet and not do something that's going to try and garner news headlines. I don't know. Maybe he just punches Lance Archer and then Cody makes a mistake. Maybe he goes here and he punches. I have no idea. Tell me in the comments. That is something I genuinely can't even take a hazard at. I cannot figure out what Mike Tyson's doing on this show. I don't mind it. It's a name and names work. 
but it truly is just baffling. But I do think that Lance Archer has to win. I bet that Arn Anderson and Jake Roberts get into it on the outside and maybe that distracts Cody because he's so worried about Arn Anderson, my coach, and then he gets rolled up. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine Lance Archer won with the most devastating move in all the sports entertainment. He won't probably win with the blackout, but I'm going with the murder hawk and he should hold on to that title for ages. And sometimes that title should headline pay-per-views. I'm so sick and tired of saying, well, that shouldn't be, it shouldn't be considered more worthy than the world title. Of course it should. The better titles you have, the better your promotion. And the other title we just mentioned is also on the line as Brody Lee takes on John Moxley. And I haven't really connected with this. You'll know that if you do indeed watch ups and downs. And again, that's on me. It doesn't mean it's bad, but I really do think after all is said and done, you just got to keep it on Mox. Which is a shame in many ways because I like Brody Lee. I like him being the leader of the Dark Order and I actually think that group now feels more threatening than ever. But if you did switch it here, it just it doesn't feel right, does it? Search your feelings like a Jedi. Search your gut. Does your gut or your feelings go, I think we should change the AEW world title? If it does, you're probably part of the Dark Order, so you don't count. I think there needs to be something here, though. I don't think it can just be John Moxley winning. I think AEW just needs a cool twist or a cool something that maybe even leads to another match. Now, I don't necessarily want to see that, but I don't know. If I drew a box right now, I would color in fifth, sixth of it, and that last six I didn't color in. Well, that's my confusion. That's like, what am I missing here? And hopefully somebody gives me a purple crayon, and then fill that in, and you have black and purple, and we all know that's a great color scheme. No, I don't know what I'm talking about either. Also, does 10 get involved? Because John Moxley just broke his arm. Is it kind of one of those deals where the Dark Order just overpowers our champion and therefore he loses the title that way? Or does he just get the actual physical title back and he, you know, gets his retribution? It's a tough one, this. I'm going with John Moxley. And I guess it's good that I don't know. You never want to be 100% sure. But it ain't all there for me. And in what I imagine will be the main event of the evening is going to be the Stadium Stampede, which sees the Inner Circle taking on the Elite alongside Matt Hardy. And I said this a few days ago, I will say it again now. This is just money in the bank all over again. Make this dumb, make this stupid, make this ridiculous, make this entertaining, and no matter what else you do on this pay-per-view, you will have won. I can't believe we're just going to have this and then the Elite versus the Inner Circle is going to be done. And that's why Chris Jericho's posse needs to win. Of course they do. Now that kind of sucks because obviously Hangman Page and Matt and Nick Jackson have only just come back, but they can lose here and it don't make a difference. Maybe there's even more falling out with Adam Page. Don't forget the Adam Page, Kenny Omega stuff. That's been a story for weeks, months. I don't think they're just going to throw that out the window. I'm not saying he's going to go heel, but again, remember, there is also actually no winners or losers in this. It's like Otis winning the Money in the Bank briefcase. It was just so ridiculous, it wasn't even a thing before all was said and done. And that's what I think we'll do here. I believe it's no count out and it's no disqualification and falls can count anywhere, even though there is going to be a ring on the 50 yard line. I suppose it depends on what kind of feuds you want to do coming out of this. For example, maybe Chris Jericho pins Nick Jackson and then you can start a little program with them. And now you're like, what, Simon? That sounds crap, but does it? Why did Nick Jackson have to go home for so long, the global pandemic aside? Because the inner circle took a grate and slammed it into his head. I know about you, but I would want some revenge doubly if Chris Jericho had also just beaten my ass for real. And also probably by cheating. Jericho does. So I'm going with the inner circle. I think it's important they do win here and then everyone here can spin off into their own little things and we can do a little bit of 50-50 and then eventually one group stands tall. Maybe we even get into the end of the shelf life with the inner circle. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I can just smell it. And there it is. There's double or nothing. They may add a few more matches after this video goes live, but what can you do? You've got to draw a line under it somewhere. And while I don't think it's been the best build, for an AEW pay-per-view, I am still very excited about it and appreciate that I have some entertainment this weekend. Now make sure you go down in the comments, let me know your predictions, I'll always have a look. Sometimes I'll just steal your ideas, like the video, share the video, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, it costs nothing. Then head over to whatculture.com, read yourself some articles, follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE, and watch more videos here on Where What Culture Wrestling. My name is Simon from What Culture on a hot and sunny day. See you soon.